You buckled up? You're not buckled. No, you're not quite buckled, dude. All right. Click, click. And good morning, everybody. Jackson and I are uh, starting our day off on the road here in Freeport, Maine. Mm -hmm. We're very close to the ocean. The cool air feels fantastic. And uh, blue skies and sunshine in the forecast. What? Yes. But right now, we are parked. Well, here, I'll show you. Now, first of all, I missed the turn coming in here. I missed the driveway in here, which is only funny because of the destination where I'm at. I am actually at the Garmin headquarters here in Freeport, Maine. And check out this greeting. Inside here, they've got the world's largest rotating globe. Well, wait a minute. Well, besides the actual globe that I'm standing on, I guess. Let's go inside and check it out. So see, Guinness Book World Record for a revolving globe called Earth has a circumference of 129 feet. But it's broken today. <laughs> that's, that's right. It is uh, not moving today because it has a mechanical issue that they are working on. But I did let them know that I was disappointed that it is not moving right now. Uh, they're calling a tech, so we'll see how long it takes. But see the mechanics down there? Those are the gears. And uh, it would usually spin this globe out for us to see, but... Uh, not today. It does not spin at the same uh, rate as, as the Earth, but most people get to see it spinning <laughs> like everything else lately. We get something very random and unusual. The broken globe for Garmin. Well, it's Monday. My brain's all messed up too, so I, I guess Garmin gets a pass today. Okay. Oh, this is um, uh, Route 1, guys here on the east coast of Maine, uh, not to be confused with Highway 1 or 101 back home, which I love, that follows the coast all the way from Washington to California. But no, this is uh, Maine's version of it, and I could certainly just take this all the way up through Maine. I don't know. I, I don't really have any summer plans, like I said. Um, I'm gonna go where RVs are wanted, essentially. So we'll just see. And cell phone coverage, I gotta be able to get to it to upload videos too. So it's, it's up in the air. If you guys have any suggestions, like I said, at least probably till the end of August, I am thinking I'm gonna be in Maine, just uh, exploring. We shall see. So also here in Freeport is the, well, I guess what the locals call, she told me it's called the Big F Indian. I don't know what the F stands for. Freeport or the Big F in. Indian? I, I don't know for sure, but uh, it's a big one there. It also looks like he got a paint job uh, recently. Is those, those colors are pretty fresh and poppy on him. Looks good with that blue sky behind him. I'm going to check this place out. You know, besides the KOA and, uh, well, Renee and Monique's RV, I don't think I've seen a single RV on the road in Maine anywhere. Uh, <laughs> no overnight parking. No RV parking. I'm parked way back there and I'm walking to L.L. Bean right now. It's funny because clearly Maine knows about RVs. It's just that it looks like the, the city of Freeport may be a lot like Portland with just, don't even stop here. Just don't even stop here. Just bypass this city. But no, I'm going to do it. We're going to check this out. This is interesting. This is called Woodland Village here outside of L.L. Bean. And they have a few quirky wooden structures. It's cool. It's a very big lot here. I think it's all, yeah, this is all L.L. Bean, everything around me. So here's the home. There's a big store over there. Uh, over here, we've got the bike, boat, and ski building. So the home store is just that, stuff for inside your home. Okay, cool. So we've got the fishing and hunting place over there, a big, huge boot right there, and they got the, the store here. So we'll go check out the store. They have a riverbed aquarium with some fish. What's that? All the kids' fingerprints in that bubble. Huh? Oh, I know. Do you want us to take one from this side? 
I'll give them credit. They have uh, decorated the store nicely. Reminds me of Shields or Bass Pro or Cabela's or something like that. It's cool. It's themed. They've even got a little fireplace here. Can you imagine in the winter, you know, when out front they've got six feet of snow and stuff? And come in here. There's a pond right here in the store, too. Fish in there. There's a something. I don't know what that is exactly. I found the camping section. Tents, sleeping bags, cookware, cast iron cooking, yeah. The final charge, state of Maine locked moose. Yeah, they're cuddling. I could be bad and spend a lot of money here today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of here quick though. By the way, guys, it's taken a little bit, but I have now officially put on over 100 miles on Yoda, and those rear brakes are still holding up. They're not warped, not giving me any problems, no vibrations, still good. Um, we've made it past the 48 hour and whatever, 100 mile, at, at least. I, I, I can say with confidence, I think the brakes are really fixed this time. Okay, this is interesting. I don't even know if you Mainanites know about this. Is that a thing, a Mainanite? A Mainite? You Mainans. Mainans. We're going to go with Mainans. Did you Mainans know that there is a desert of Maine? That's right. Maine's most famous natural phenomena. Okay. And then it says you'll find the only desert east of the Mississippi, the giant sand dunes, original 1783 barn, uh, and some other stuff. That's right. The only desert east of the Mississippi. Well, let's go check it out here in Maine. Uh, maybe this place is a little more popular than I realized. Desert of Maine this way. It's uh, 12.50 to get in to go walk to the desert. <laughs> I don't know if that's really worth it, but uh, I mean, I'm already here, so I'm gonna take you guys along. We're gonna go look at the desert. I was anticipating that it would be cool, so I already got my magnet. It says Desert of Maine on it, and it has sand in the shoe from the actual desert here, so. Oh, it's so hot here in the desert of Maine. No, it's really not. We're gonna struggle to hit 80 degrees here in the desert, but say hello to my camel friends here, and welcome to the desert of Maine. Okay, it looks awfully deserty. There is usually a tram that is out of service today, or booked or something like that. Not anyway, not available for me to take the tram. But a, a one and a half mile loop around the desert is what we're looking at. Okay, here we go. It doesn't appear to be very busy, guys. It's windy. It does look like desert dunes, I'll say that. Okay, we're here at our first attraction, the Buried Spring House. Buried beneath this dune is a spring house built in 1938, but completely covered in 1962. Oh, okay. As you can see, today's temperature here in the desert of Maine is about 80 degrees trying to get into the right mindset here okay so put yourself in the shoes of an east coaster an easterner over here this is amazing this is beautiful uh, or you could just go out west to Arizona New Mexico or Southern California and this gets old real quick but okay it's a tourist attraction here in Maine <laughs> all right well let's at least point out the plant life lots and lots of pine trees not pine trees that I'm used to. Let me see if I can show you this. But uh, pine trees. And pine cones, yeah. Here's a sign talking about the panoramic view. Spreading sand to the west and north separated by this section of trees. Okay. Yeah, there were three school buses of uh, kids. I think that's why there's no tours today because they hogged them, but there's the desert out there and clay mounds. Layers of clay were probably produced by the action of water, either from the melting glacier ice or, as some geologists believe, sediment accumulations at the bottom of the lake. I don't have any other information. I'm just, this, this is just a map. So I'm just reading these. I don't really know what we're looking at. So this is a reclaimed area of moss beds here. Can you see them? Mm-hmm. Essentially, it just looks like a darker area of, of the desert down here. And it's fuzzy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's prettier than the desert. I like that. So, I don't know, I feel like I've been walking a mile. It just, <laughs> it's not deserty anymore. We're like in this really pretty woodsy area, but there's nothing else, no signs, no plaques, no stops or anything. It's just a pretty trail. <laughs> Weird. 
don't get me wrong, it's a great day to be outside. It's a beautiful day here in Maine, but I just don't know if I would say you guys got to come to the desert of Maine. Maybe you should just enjoy it from your computer screen or phone screen, because, uh, well, I guess it is technically cheaper to come here than it would be to get on a plane and go to Arizona, but 1250 to... Mm, I don't see it. Sorry, guys. And I, I'm just being honest with you guys. I, I you know, I'm not going to promote something or say, you got to go check this out if it's not worth it. I don't see, know. and then I feel like we're in Jurassic Park where eventually we will see dinosaurs on this because they got these signs, Oasis water, not drinkable. That's great. It's just, it's just another sign out here that doesn't tell me anything. Okay, maybe there was an oasis here, I don't know. Buried trees. The trees around you are growing on the same level as the building behind you. As you can see it, they are buried to a considerable depth. So yeah, in the nicest way possible, you guys don't need to come out and see this one probably, unless you're just, you've never seen a desert and you really want to see the desert here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm gonna spend the day, rest of the day with Jax and make some lunch. Yeah, so... This is what happens if I don't fold my freshly washed laundry right away. It becomes a cat bed. Look at the fur on that. <sighs> oh well. Jax gets what he wants. I learned my lesson. I'm going to fold some clothes, guys. Have a good day, Jax, and I'll see you in a few. Bye-bye.